All right, so let's go over a couple of these and uh, see how it works. And then I'll set you a homework based on this uh, at the end of this lesson. So the first thing to keep in mind when you're looking at this, number one, is you should be aware of the rules. Okay, And all of these involve translations. So we should know fx plus a will give us a translation where? In the x or y axis? Y axis, but by handy units. Exactly. Okay, so it just gets translated by 0, 8. The other thing we should be aware is fx plus a inside the bracket will give us a translation in, in the x axis by, by how many units? Minus a. Okay, because it's inside the bracket, so it behaves funny. The second thing I'll suggest is when you're doing these questions at home is to use either GeoGebra, which is free on the Apple, on our iPhone at the moment, so and the Android. I think they will have an Apple version soon. You could use also Desmos, which again is free, and obviously Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha. Okay, all of these sites. Okay, you, the, a lot of this graph plotting software is actually designed for exactly things like this. That's why that was the key thing behind it behind the, the sort of development is to take a graph, move it around and see what's going to happen and how the equation changes. Okay? So let's take the f let's take one of them. Let's take for example question two. Okay? Now before you look at any of these questions, what you need to do is take away, start by thinking, if I didn't have a translation, so I didn't have the plus two, the minus two, the times two, the divided by two, if I didn't have all of that, what curve will I have? All I have. If there wasn't any translation in there. Any uh, question two. Y equals x squared. So without a translation, okay, or transformation without stretch, we've got basically y equals x squared. Okay. What I'm going to do just for the pur purpose of notation is just use the fx notation so I can see what's going on. Fx equals x squared. And what we could do is just start by drawing uh, a quick sketch. And I'm going to use a dotted line. And I know what that x squared looks like. And if I'm not sure, I can obviously put it into GeoGebra, De Decimals, or Wolfram Alpha, and just get a feel of what that looks like. Then, then after that, obviously, I've got a plus 2. Now, how do I generate this equation, x plus 2 squared? Do I, What do I do to the fx? Do I put? A plus 2 outside it or inside it? Inside it. So I've got fx plus 2 inside it. <coughs> okay. And inside means, what does this mean? It means it, it's telling me my priority. It says take your input, add 2, then apply your function. And your function is to square <coughs> the whole thing. Okay, so that's, that's all that's telling me to do. So therefore, I've got my x squared. I know that it's going to be a translation of minus 2 to the right. So I'm going to put in minus 2. Okay, and then I've got something like this. If I want to be a super student, I can work out what this is going to be. Uh, so if I was to write out uh, this, if I double bracket, write this out, I can see that if I was to expand it out, that... That would be 2 times 2, which is 4. And when x equals 0, I'll get um, 4. So I've got 0, 4. Okay. <coughs> Does that make sense? Okay, so what have we done? We start just by saying, let's just draw a dotted line of the function without any translations or stretches or whatever, yeah? No reflections, nothing. And you draw a dotted line, you think, okay then, now that it's been translated, how is that dotted line going to move around then? And you can work that out if, you're, if you know the rules. So in C1, the only thing we need to know about is the translations, maybe some reflection. When you go on to do C3, then you'll look more into stretches and reflection as well. Okay, but at the moment it's quite straightforward. Let's have a go now, at, let's look at a cubic one. Let's do this one together. Let's say we're doing this one here x cubed plus 3, okay? So I'll take my uh, axis over here, let's put this in, and let's write down 
uh, fx equals x uh, cubed okay and roughly it looks probably something like that there's my x cubed okay there's my x cubed obviously label your axis but what we want is x cubed plus 3 so how is that fx going to be changed do we add the 3 inside or outside the bracket Hold on. Outside, right? So fx plus 3 goes outside the bracket. And therefore, what is, what's going to happen to this red dotted line? It's going to move on the x or the y? Y. <coughs> yeah? It moves up. Okay, so now the other thing to point out, guys, is um, what I could do is take a point on the curve. So this one here originally it was zero zero this is now moved up so this has now become zero three okay and then I get my x cubed plus three okay now in terms of specifying a dot over if you go back to the x squared what I could do is take my vertex so you asked me earlier what the vertex is the vertex is that minimum or maximum point Okay, that is what your vertex is. Okay, then you move it to the left, that vertex shifts. And all it does is just gives me a point that I can work with when, when you do a trans transformation. Is that clear so far? Okay, what's the, the vertex is on the quadratic, it's a minimum or maximum point. Okay, so we went over that, we've covered that. And the vertex can be worked out using the completed square form. So x plus p squared plus q, what would the vertex be? Okay, the vertex is minus pq. And there's also, if you want to work out the x-coordinate for the vertex, there's actually a formula. Are you copying this down? If you don't have it, it's minus b over 2a. Okay, and that gives you the x-coordinate of a vertex for a quadratic. Okay, and all it means is you've got a place to then work from. Yes. In these questions, you have to specify what the new vertex is. Say that again. When you're drawing the graph, you yeah. have to specify Not necessarily, um, unless they specifically ask you to. Uh, in this case, however, it's the point that lies on the x axis. So, normally, what you do need to specify is the point the curve crosses the x axis or the y axis. Yeah? All right, if we now look at, let's look at um, question, let me just go up and let's pick up this question here. Okay, let me put this up. Um, so here's my, here's this curve here. And the exact same thing applies, okay? Without, without any transformations, what sort of curve is this? Anyone know? <coughs> what? Something x. Reciprocal. Y equals 1 over x. Okay. So that's the first thing we should know. Without any transformations, what sort of curve do I have? I've got 1 over x. And can I only pick a question for us to do? Why don't we do the last one, question 10? That's a good one. Or maybe we'll do two. Let's start for an easier one. Um, let's do, I don't know, question 8, yeah? Alright, so, again, uh, I'll draw my, oops, uh, let's pick this one in. Okay, and let's put in a dotted line for 1 over x. So we've got the general shape of the curve, and our y equals 1 over x. Now on here we've also got an asymptote. The asymptote <coughs> is when y equals 0 and x equals 0 so these are my asymptotes okay that I can put in uh, let me just in fact I will put that in there's my asymptote in there okay uh, it lies on the actual axis okay so there's my asymptote now let's go back we've got g of x equals 1 over x so when we do g of x take away 1 we're doing 1 over x take away 1. 
what effect is that going to have? How will it be translated, Fabian? Um, it would be shifted down by one. Excellent. Okay. So what's basically going to happen is my asymptote, which was y to <coughs> zero, will now become my asymptote would now become this one here. Okay, so I've got y equals minus one. Okay, so there's my new asymptote. I can now draw my curve in as though that were the x-axis and then bring it down. Uh, oops, let me just go down a bit. Let's undo that. Okay, there you go. And you could do something like that. Okay, and there, therefore is my new curve. And all that's happened is the asymptote has now shifted down. So before we looked at the vertex on a quadratic, or we looked at the, um, the center <coughs> zero, 0, and we saw how that would move. Now, in this case, we'll just look at the asymptote. Okay. Now, to finish off, let's look at, say, question 10, where you've got gx take away 2 plus 1. There you've got two combinations. Okay. Um, and so if I write gx take away 2 plus 1, where gx is 1 over x, so if I'm doing take away 2 plus 1, what I'm doing is um, I take my x value, I take away 2. I mean, you don't need to work on the algebra, I guess, at this stage. But you take your x value, you take away 2. You then apply your function. The function is telling us to do what? What's g telling us to do to x? No, g. What, what is G, how do you describe what G is telling you? So G says take your input and do what to it? <coughs> no, so if I had G of 2, what's the answer? How do you work that out? Yes, me. So uh, if you put 2 inside a function, uh, Andrew, help me out here. So you put 2 inside a function, what do you get? Good. So wherever there's an x, you just put a 2. G is telling you to take the reciprocal of 2. You do 1 over your input. Yeah. So here, when you've got gx take away 2, it's saying take your input, take away 2 first, <coughs> apply g. What's g saying? G is saying do 1 over your input, and then finally you add 1. But this is more sort of C3 work. What we need to know is a minus 2 does what to it? What sort of translation, Jude? What's that going to do? Translate it by how? Add 2. X or Y? X. X, 2 and 0. And what about this one here? Uh, Whitney, what's that going to do? The plus 1 outside the bracket. Go up. What does a plus one outside the bracket do to it? it Yeah, so it moves the curve, the function, up by two. So if you've got a one, it will move it up by one. Good. So you've got zero, one. Agree? So overall, our translation will be two, one. So what we can do is take out our 1 over x, and we can draw a dotted line. And we know the asymptote now, which crossed here, is now going to move across by 2 and up by 1. So this is now going to be my new <coughs> sort of asymptote. I wonder if I can draw a dotted line. Probably can. All right. So this. Asymptote is the line that a curve will never touch. Okay, let me just talk about that in a second. Let me just draw, draw this. So this is my new asymptote. Okay, so this is now moved, and now I've got a 1 over x like this, where the blue curve is still my x, and there's my y. Okay, so these lines, they should really be a dotted line. I'm not sure if I can... Um, Color thickness. Yeah, it's good to probably put a dotted line in. Let's see if, if they've got something. All right, I'll, I'll stick to a straight line for the moment. And maybe we can do uh, something like this. OK. 
Okay, but if I just mention that this is my actual curve, th in this part here, and so all that's happened is just moved across uh, <coughs> by two and then one. Okay, so an asymptote is, is a line that on certain curves, they don't exist on all the curves, but there's certain curves like one over x. Okay, it's just a line the curve will never touch. Okay, so for example, um, if you increase x or at this point when you've got 1 over x on your asymptote one of your asymptote is x equals 0 on a 1 over x curve if you put 0 what happens if you do 1 over 0 do you get a number you're going to test it on your calculators 1 over 0 on the calculator try it put it in your calculator you get an error Okay, you can't divide by zero. Okay, and basically what happens is that if you if you were to do zero point ten to the six one, yeah, or z or zero times ten to the minus six one, a very very small number, you get a very large number. So in other words, your answer tends towards infinity. Okay, so that y will just increase until it goes towards infinity. But obviously, at that point, we can't divide by zero. So it's an asymptote. It's never, it's not, it's never going to reach that point. So that's what we mean by an asymptote. All right, let's get on with a couple of questions, and I'll stop the video there. So